It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media. Hey, guys. Sorry, I was just muted. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with It's the Interview Series, presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks, as always, for making your way here. Hey, for checking out the series, uh, I do hope you hit the subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week, new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover some new ones as well iTunes and Apple Podcast at Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, WFPK.org, or YouTube for the video versions. I'm Kyle Mayer. Today, talking with my buddies, My Morning Jacket. In fact, Jim James and Patrick Callahan. We actually taped this uh, a little while ago. They were doing uh, two shows in Louisville, their hometown, where I'm based as well, which unfortunately uh, was not able to happen uh, because uh, because Jim James got COVID right beforehand and uh, and called a few days before that uh, before those shows to talk about the two sets and to give us a tip off that uh, they've got an idea that these will actually become uh, an annual festival for them as well. So we get to talk about the live stuff and then of course uh, we jump into the uh, the new record, their latest record, the self titled album that came out just last year. Uh, Jim tells us about uh, the themes of, of alienation, a struggle to find one's place in the world that makes up the foundation of the lyrics, uh, as well as what it's like to be looked at as a kind of guide through life while still trying to figure it out for yourself. Uh, Patrick Callahan also going to talk about rediscovering who the band was and would be after their extended hiatus and their future plans for volume two and three of their recently launched archival series. So let's do this, shall we? We're talking My Morning Jacket with Jim James and Patrick Callahan of My Morning Jacket. Hey, hello, hello. It's great to have you guys back. We've enjoyed the uh, love the new record again, as as always. Um, I haven't hated any single My Morning Jacket record yet, so. <laughs> That's good to hear. We'll take those odds. <laughs> we're, st- we're still on the roll here. No, but it's it, it's been a long time since you've uh, you all have, have played here in town. And 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 I don't know. It, was there a was there a vision behind what you all wanted to do here? I'll, I'll actually throw that question out to whoever might have had the the concept for this uh, this pair of shows. Well, we just really wanted to. Uh, you know, I mean, we always try to celebrate Louisville when we play here, but we really wanted to do. Uh, you know, just really embrace the magic and uh, the wonder and the beauty and uh, just so so many great things about Louisville. We just wanted to like try and high- highlight as much of that as possible and hopefully start a tradition of doing this um, kind of festival here in Louisville, kind of hometown festival or whatever that hopefully uh, knock on wood will only expand over the years. Uh, to just kind of showcase more and more uh, in music and food and civic engagement and just all, all sorts of things. So, wow, a, a festival. Ex- expand on that a little bit. So right now, do you think of this in terms right now as, as the, like the, uh, like how, what version of a festival are we seeing? Is this just a show that you're hoping to build into a festival? I'd say it's like a seed. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're trying so this, this uh, you know, obviously everybody knows the COVID story and how crazy uh, COVID's been and, and the music uh, concert industry and stuff has been impacted so much by it. And I feel like uh, the trying to get everything uh, up and off the ground uh, to do like a quote unquote, I don't know, festival, uh, it's tough pulling a lot of stuff together. So I think this is kind of our uh, beginning phases of trying to start something like that. Um, and also trying to figure out how it works in with all the other great festivals in town. You know, there's there's so many great things happening already. So we're just trying to figure out how how we can like fit into it and uh, be a part of the, the fabric of everything that's going on. And also just, I'll add to that, uh, just, we just have a, you know, we've been playing hometown shows for quite a few years now and uh we're really just trying to tool with the idea of of keeping the uh the format interesting and ever changing and we've already kind of played every venue in town and 
want to make each time its own special, unique experience. So um, this is the first step in, uh, you know, trying to figure out something to bring uh, to the table each time we play here because it's a hometown show and, and we love our hometown and, and respect the responsibility of, of coming back and, and representing this town to not only the citizens that don't get to see everything every day, but also the people that travel in from out of town to give them a good experience. So this is one step in that direction. No, this is exciting. Uh, this is really exciting to know. So, you know, to have this as a, a consistent thing year after year, and, and we should highlight um, uh, the artists that you have playing here too, because again, it's two nice ones at the Iroquois Amphitheater, one at, at Waterfront Park, and you've got some great openers. Patrick, you've got some uh, competition because uh, the uh, Louisville Leopards are going to be playing with you guys, right? That's right. I might have done myself in with this one, Kyle. <laughs> no, there's honestly, would we. We played with the Louisville Leopards, I believe it's, it might be 10 years to the date, uh, or not to the date, but I think it's a, a full decade. And when we played with the Louisville Leopards last time at the Riverfront, I just had so much fun. And I thought like, gosh, if I ever am lucky enough to have a kid and they want to be in the Leopards, I want to do this again and share the stage with them. And, and here we are 10 years later. And, uh, you know, I think that both the uh, Louisville Leopards and uh, the uh, drum corps, you know, they, they both took a big hit during the pandemic because their fundraising comes from going out and playing gigs. And so uh, we want to get these organizations as much exposure as we can because they're doing great work. There's not a whole lot of emphasis of music education in schools and what they do for kids is uh, priceless. So yeah, we're, we're definitely gonna have to come swinging when it's time for us to play because those kids are gonna bring it both nights. Incredible to watch them. And, and, and that's not the only openers. We should uh, mention the other ones. Uh, who is it again, Jim? Uh, Keanu and the Sun Kings, I know was a part of it. And who am I missing here? Yeah, and producing a kind generation. Right. Keanu, Keanu's at the uh, Iroquois and producing a kind generation's at the waterfront. And both of those are incredible artists right there. Uh, some of my favorites, uh, especially Kiana opened up the uh, the Waterfront, we uh, Waterfront Wednesday season this year. And just, uh, God, that, that band is so great. Uh, have, you, have you been able to catch them live yet? Yeah, it's re really, uh, really phenomenal. Really, re so many cool vibes, so many cool positive vibes coming out. And uh, yeah, Kiana and the Sun Kings, like, what a cool blend of uh, so many different genres of music, so many different styles. And uh Producing a kind generation, I I, just, I really love their positivity and and the messages of like hope that they put out into the world. And I just feel like uh, both those those artists are just like really bringing a lot of uh, of hope and joy to to the world. And uh, yeah, we're just so stoked to to get to share the stage with them. Yeah, that's a that's a really good pivot point to put in here too, because you know th those words. You use those words, uh, you know, it's not the first time you, those have fallen out of your mouth right there. Hope, joy, love. Uh, I mean, you've sang about that word uh, quite a lot throughout your career. In fact, you, you put it three times in a song uh, in the title this <laughs> time around. But there is something that kept, I kept coming back to that with your all's new record. Again, just an outstanding piece of work. Once again, the self-titled record. But this seems like maybe the most peace and love album that you all have ever made as as i hear it and maybe that's for obvious reasons but but what what directed you to go in that direction uh to to, to make this record so almost thematically as it feels like about sort of somewhat positivity well i mean i feel like as a songwriter and as a band we always want to bring positivity to the world uh, i feel like a lot of my life I, i've really struggled uh with being a human and struggled with understanding the uh, the hatred in the world and, and the chaos and division in the world. And I think a lot of that's uh, come out in my music of just me as a being or whatever, trying to trying to understand my place in it all and, and uh, a lot of confusion and, and sadness and stuff. But I feel like uh, one of the benefits for all of us of being around longer and longer is hopefully you can uh, learn more about yourself and, and try to become a more peaceful person. 
and uh, realize that that love, as much love as you can cultivate for yourself, you can offer more to other people and to the world. So I think as as I've tried to grow, and I'm still incredibly lost, so don't get me wrong, but as I've tried to grow and, uh, and uh, just try to love myself more and be nicer to myself, kinder to myself, it's like, I just want to be a part of that uh, reminder to other people, you know, to remind them to be, be nicer to themselves, be kinder to themselves, and in turn, I feel like that helps you face the world with more kindness and, and more uh, openness in your heart. And uh, I just feel like it's, it's really all of our sacred duty uh, as beings on, you know, it, just to spread as much peace and love as we can, because there's so much division, so much hatred, and so much violence in the world that I, I'm still hopeful can be overcome. But it's like, we all got to uh, try and spread as much yeah, just spread as much love and positivity as we can, because it's it's hard, you know, everybody knows life can be really hard, and we all struggle, you know, and it's like, I, I think it's just trying, I want our music to be uh, just kind of hopefully a, a, almost like a hug to somebody or, or a reminder, you know, that there's there's love out there. Yeah, I was, um, I was watching the uh, George Carlin, the new George Carlin documentary that's on HBO, and, and, and someone asked him if he, you know, if he did his art, if he did his comedy, in hopes to change someone's mind. And he said, no, I, I don't want to make people think. I just want them to let them know that I'm thinking. And I thought that's, that's, that's sort of an interesting question to pose, you know, when, when you have songs directed like this, uh, because, because for you, uh, for you all, uh, both of you all, as the creator uh, of these songs, like, you know, I'll, I'll throw that question. Do you hope to change people's minds or, or is it just more about letting them know that this is where you all stand? Definitely. I, I hope to, uh, now I wouldn't even say change people's minds, but just maybe open people's minds to the possibility of change. Because I think we live in this world uh, where everybody's trained to just yell at each other, you know, and it's, there's all these platforms on social media and stuff for people to just yell at each other, you know, and, and people are so divided, hardcore right wing, hardcore left wing or whatever that they're missing the whole point that that we sh our, li our lives would all be better off if we could meet somewhere in the middle you know and then I feel like I really want our music to open people's hearts to that possibility of uh you know in opening your mind to somebody who has different views from you or is a uh, you know brought up in a different circumstance than you are just opening your mind to the possibility of, of looking at their life and, and looking at your own and, you know, you're not always going to agree on everything, but I do think uh, we could reach a lot more uh, peace in the world if people could kind of recognize more of our similarities than, than really focusing on the differences. Um, so that, that's a big part of, of what I think about and what I hope that maybe our music can play a small part in. Patrick, I'll throw this one towards you. Um... For what you all did, you know, looking back at the last decade, there was a hiatus there. Then, of course, we got this surprise album with Waterfall 2. When you all came back with this one, when it was time to get back to work and create this self-titled record here, was there a thought of like, was, was there any conversation of who do we want to be with this new chapter? Well, I don't know if we really get to determine who we are. You know, I, I think we were really just trying to take stock in what we uh what we have you know i think a lot of a lot of what we were going through is just uh what a lot of bands or a lot anybody in a relationship goes through when the uh when uh, all the variables kind of add up and blind you to what you you know why you're there in the first place so in my mind at least getting back in the studio together was more about just feeling out what it felt like to be a band again so the the sound of this album is five brothers coming back together and and, and working it out so I, if anything we went in kind of to figure out what that was and not so much kind of determine it and I, I think that's kind of gone that's become our mantra of just kind of like paying attention to to what's in front of us and and being stewards instead of trying to curate every second of every day now that it's um 
now that the record has has been out, what I guess has it been out a whole year yet? I don't, I don't remember the uh, the actual release date. No, not yet. It came out in the fall. Yeah, like can you can you hear it yet? Where you all landed, especially musically, like every jacket record, uh, you know, is different. Every single one has a different f- sound, a different you know flavor, whatever. And this one, I, I feel, is no different. It, it um, to me, it's almost one of I don't want to say breeziest because you have like great rocking moments like complex and, and jams throughout it. But there, there is something a little bit breezier, I feel like, than than I've heard before. That's just my interpretation. Have you all figured out where you all landed on this one, uh, musically speaking? <laughs> Jim, <laughs> Jim, you want to take <laughs> I don't. I don't know. That's one of my favorite things about making records is like uh, it's not really in your control. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. the record really does make itself you know and that that's where i really believe in uh spirit i really believe in uh some kind of higher power that that i don't really know i can't put a name to it but uh just the way spirit comes and takes over um because you have all these thoughts and you have all these notions of what you might want a record to be you know we want this record to be this or that but spirit always determines it you know and it's like because there's a we've worked on a ton of songs for this record you know i don't over 25 songs or something you know we just batted around a ton of ideas and uh you know worked on a a bunch of stuff but at the end of the day the spirit takes over and and uh, the songs kind of they work or they don't you know and it's really cool because then sometimes the song that didn't work this record will end up working 10 years from now or whatever for some weird reason you know so it's like there really a lot of it is just out of your control um and then once you're done with the record, it becomes like another uh, seed or like a, a, a way to like, it's like you still have to cultivate it and work with it uh, when you play live. You know, the songs expand and change and speed up or slow down or grow new parts or whatever. There's really so much, as I think about it and talk about it more and more, it really just seems so much like uh, gardening or, or farming or whatever. It's like you have these seeds and you have to put the time into uh watering them and and cultivating them and tending to them and some of them turn out to be really beautiful things and other ones don't make it and you know it's just like it depends on the seasons it depends on life you know there's so so much that's out of your control well if you don't mind me getting specific on a song uh uh, i'm going to stick with the gardening analogy here and uh tell me how you grew complex because uh as I, I do love it when you guys pull out the, the the big time rock and roll, and that's one of the biggest moments on the record right there. Well, I mean, Complex is kind of some of my, uh, I feel like if like aliens ever come back or whatever and find my music, or not even aliens or whatever, they'll look back and one of the major themes, they'll be like, geez, this guy was like super confused, you know, like, <laughs> super lost, you know, like what's, what's going on with this dude? Uh, but it's just kind of another thing of me trying to feel like how, how do I fit into this world? I mean, that, that's just kind of been one of the major themes in my life that only now I'm starting to find a little piece with it, but I still struggle with it. It's just, how do I fit in? You know, and I know a lot of people feel that way. Uh, and I just really struggle with that on a daily basis of just feeling like I do not fit in. I just do not, this place does not make sense to me. Uh, and, and it just all feels so complex sometimes. And, uh, you know, it's just the, it's just me trying to figure out how do I deal with this you know like how do I how do I find try to find real love in this crazy world how do I try to face the pain you know or do I numb the pain with with drugs and alcohol or you know how do I deal with these things and uh I feel like a lot of these things uh just also become so empty you know in the, in the chorus or whatever it's like the, you get what you pay for I just feel like there's like a lot of so many things have been devalued uh, in our society too. like, you know, music being one of them, you know, it's like there's there's so many ways that uh, I feel like just the, our whole uh, way of looking at things through this lens of capitalism and and just the brutality of it all of, of how we're we're trained to climb the ladder and make as much money as as ruthlessly as we can. Uh, and that just seems so wrong to me um and so i I don't know i'm just kind of constantly struggling with that and music obviously is is, is a vehicle for for peace and a vehicle for understanding and um so yeah i feel like it just feels good to like 
get move the energy you know so i think complex is just like an effort to move that energy and try and turn it into something good that's interesting you, just the whole i don't know contradiction of uh public perception versus private perception uh because you know for you as you say somewhat feeling lost in the world never knowing your place but to so many people they look at you all as guides like how do you how do you comprehend that how do you deal with that i don't know i mean i i don't really think about that i mean i i hope maybe as you say that if people look at us as guides or whatever that that would just mean hopefully they're finding some some comfort in our music you know that that maybe that because i know that music works for me that way uh it, it guides me um but for me i don't really look at the uh very often uh, at the personal lives of of people that I listen to or whatever you know what I mean it's like occasionally that enters into it but so I, I almost don't really think about that I know what you mean because sometimes it seems like um well whatever like even like a classic Kurt Cobain story or something of, of somebody who you know other musicians might look at Kurt Cobain and be like oh my god he's got you know all his dreams came true you know he's, he's playing music and everybody loves it but he's miserable you know it's like he's it's not working out for him and that's a thing I think there's so many levels to life you know we all have all these different levels of who we are and uh you know there's musical levels and personal levels and educational levels and all these different ways that we are so i think i think we need to think of each other as more complex beings than uh just these i think we're kind of trained to, to look at each other in these kind of super limited ways so i think it's possible that a person could be doing well on one level but not doing so well on another mm -hmm. like i'm not very good at a basketball or whatever <laughs> you know what i mean it's like there's just so many so many uh levels you know of just what we can do who we can be you you may not be good at basketball as as compared to like steph curry but you know yeah. <laughs> i think it's a relative right there that's a re re <laughs> um I appreciate the music that you all do put out because I do know a lot of people find comfort in it. I've had plenty of moments that I have turned to the work that you all have produced. Uh, it's powerful. And I, I'll turn it back around to, you know, the, uh, the original topic at hand here, seeing you guys live. I'm not near the first one or the thousandth person to say it, but it is a transformative experience. You know, what you all turn into on that stage and what is projected out of you all. It's incredible. So let I'm just throwing a you know a thank you for that to both of you. Thank you. Thank That's you. really really means a lot. We really appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I, I will quickly ask about one more thing. Um, uh, you all recently did a volume one of uh, I guess what is an ongoing series, the MMJ Live series that went out, a, a show from 2015. You call it volume one. I'm going to have to ask about what comes next or what the plans are for this series if, you, if you're not able to get too specific. Yeah, we're actually working on that right uh -huh. now. Uh, getting ready to, uh, we're kind of getting the art together and, and stuff for volume two. So uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll be talking about that. And uh, we're kind of getting volume three together too. So we're, we're trying to do one a year uh, you know, sometimes that's easier than than not, you know, just trying to find the right shows and get it, you know, get it mixed and, and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's exciting. Yeah. Is this uh, are you all just are, are these like all time favorite shows? Are you do you get to argue about that? That part of the, uh, the series? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think the whole idea behind this is like there's so many releases out there of bands that just like put out like a a board recording of, of their shows. And that's great because I mean, people can get instantaneous access to something they attended, but we're really trying to zero in on stuff that was important to us or had some kind of meaning to our fan base and go back and give it a proper overall look and get it mixed really well and mastered well. And, and uh, you know, give them a version of it that that they deserve you know that something that really honors the show and the performances and and uh not just rushed out so everybody can listen to it there's a lot of care put into this and, and we're excited about the whole series so looking forward to volume two and and uh other releases beyond 
Well, I'm looking forward to hearing them. In the meantime, again, Iroquois Amphitheater and uh, Waterfront Park. I'm excited to see you guys down there. Thanks. We're stoked. Can't wait. We're so excited. My thanks, Jim James, Patrick Callahan, My Morning Jacket, got the new self-titled LP and the uh, live archival series as well. Uh, if you search deeper within this series, Kyle Meredith with My Morning Jacket, uh, I put out an episode in July of 2020, uh, the last time that I talked with Jim that features uh, several of my interviews with the band. So if you want to go deeper into my conversations with MMJ, just uh, search Kyle Meredith with My Morning Jacket within this series right here. And thanks to you for hanging out and uh, again, checking out the episode. Uh, go ahead, hit that subscribe button before you get out of here so you can keep up with all the interviews that I put out every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at iTunes and Apple Podcast, at Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, YouTube for the video versions, anywhere you get your podcast from. Subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. Then after that, head over to WFPK.org, where I do a show Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern, an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at wfpk.org. Consequence, they've got your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all three of them, at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition of Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. <laughs> I think we got the time. I think we got the time for that. It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media.